What's up guys, you're here with Gordon from Pig Dogs, and thank you for joining me here for your free picks for Wednesday, April 24th. Well guys, uh, after having only two picks uh, on Tuesday, we had uh, Lazio to win against Juventus, and they did win, which was a nice plus 190 hit for us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they did not qualify for the finale of Coppa Italia, because they conceded a goal late in that game, 86th, 84th minute or something like that. And uh, Juventus advanced on aggregate after beating them 2-0 in the first leg. Uh, for our second pick, we had Arsenal to win and both teams to score. And uh, that would have been a lovely hit if Chelsea decided to show up for that game. Uh, they got their asses whooped 5-0 against Arsenal. Uh, it was quite an embarrassing performance from them. And uh, they simply did not deserve anything better for, uh, than that to happen to them. Uh, so, like I said, we had two free picks. We hit one, we lost one, uh, but we hit the one that was big at plus 190. So, hopefully, that brought some cash in your bank, guys. Uh, now it's time to focus on Wednesday, and uh, I believe we have eight free picks in this video uh, four EPL games, one Coppa Italia game, and uh, I believe three French League One games. So, uh, it's actually quite a busy uh, Wednesday, and uh, hopefully, we get some nice winners once again. For more free picks, of course, go up to the Pink Dogs YouTube channel and check it out, guys. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that like button. And uh, for my best bets, click the link in the description. That will get you up to my page where you can sign up, get a daily pass, three-day pass, seven-day pass, or even a month-long pass. You can also check all, all of my previous picks and all of my previous results and see how I have been doing in the past. Uh, let's get this shoulder on guys as we usually do in, in videos we usually kick it off with the EPL and that's exactly what we're gonna do here uh, Wolverhampton and Bournemouth is the first game that we have to talk about and I think this one could be very interesting uh, Wolverhampton hasn't won any of their last six games however uh, over the last couple of weeks or so they did get some players back from the injury list which is definitely gonna be clutch for them in this game uh, but uh, even despite that, they, they are still missing a few players uh, and uh, they still lack, uh, lack depth and that could potentially be a big problem for them. While Bournemouth on the other side hasn't won any of their last three games, they have been struggling a lot. They can't keep a clean sheet right now. They have conceded two goals against Luton Town, two goals against United and three goals against Aston Villa. Uh, one positive thing for Bournemouth is that uh, the fact that they have scored at least a goal in each of their last uh, nine games in the row and I think they will do it here as well. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of overs with both teams to score in the head-to-head -head matchups between these two teams. However, given their current, their current form and uh, uh, all the stuff that's happening in the teams, all the injuries and stuff like that, I simply have to go with goals in this one. I'm, I'm going to go with both teams to score in over two and a half. It's minus 111. Honestly, whoever gets the win here, in, in my opinion, it's a coin flip. It could go either way. Uh, but I think that goals are the way to go with this one. So Bournemouth, actually Wolverhampton versus Bournemouth, both teams to score and over two and a half goals at minus 111. In the next matchup, guys, we have Crystal Palace who's playing really well, hosting Newcastle who are also playing really well, undefeated in their last four games. While uh, Crystal Palace is now on a two-game winning streak and they have gained some nice distance uh, from their relegation zone which certainly kind of relieves the pressure from them and uh, they can really enjoy the rest of their season. Uh, Crystal Palace has beaten Liverpool 1-0 on the road and then they have beaten West Ham 5-2 at home. Uh, their offense seems to be uh, clicking right now. Their defense is quite They're playing well overall. Uh, and uh, they don't have a lot of injuries. They're missing a few players, but uh, none of those players are key players for the team and uh, all of those are ready to play and uh, ready to uh, go out and try and beat Newcastle. Newcastle on the other side is missing a lot of players. Uh, Villock, Target, Lescales, Almiron, Botman, Miley, uh, Trippier, Carlo Wilson, Jolto, Nick Pope and of course uh, Sandro Tonali who is still suspended and will probably remain suspended for uh, the foreseeable future. Uh, in the head-to-head -head matchups, when Newcastle is the home team, uh, we do not get a lot of high-scoring games. And honestly, after getting a 5-2 win against West Ham, I think that Crystal Palace will try to uh, play a little bit of a calmer game, especially in that defensive end, maybe focus a little bit more on that against a solid team like Newcastle is. But Newcastle is trying to get to the top five and maybe qualify for the Champions League. 
which means that uh, they will try to attack here and uh, they have a player who's been doing an outstanding work for them now over the last few weeks and that is Alexander Isak uh, who's been scoring a lot of goals taking a lot of shots and I will take him to get over one and a half shots on target in this game and that is at minus 118. Next, we have Merseyside Derby, guys, in the EPL, one of the biggest derbies in the EPL between Everton and Liverpool, and uh, I think it should be a very interesting game. Uh, Everton is fighting for survival in the EPL, and they did get two wins out of their last three games, which is definitely very, very significant for them, but uh, I don't think this is a game where they will be looking for points, if I'm being honest. Liverpool is still in the title race with Manchester City and Arsenal. They're now in second place. With a win here, they will once again take over the top of the table. And I honestly think they will get a win. This is their third game in a row that they are playing on the road. They have won the first two, one against Atalanta in the uh, in, in Europa League. And the latest one was against Fulham in the EPL this past weekend, which they won 3-1. Uh, in order for us to make some money on Liverpool, we either have to take them on minus one, minus one and a half possibly. Uh, but then again, you are hoping that Everton is not going to score a goal in their current form, which is actually pretty solid. Instead of that, I decided to take Liverpool to win at over two and a half goals. And that is at minus 108. The last game of the day in the EPL is between Manchester United and Sheffield United. Now, Manchester United barely got through the finals of the FA Cup by beating Coventry after a penalty shootout. Uh, not to mention that uh, they probably should have lost uh, in the overtime of that game. Uh, but luckily for them, they are not playing against Sheffield, who hasn't won any of their last nine games, who will be getting relegated. And the team that has only one win, uh, three draws and 12 losses so far on the road. Uh, in the head-to-head -head games, going back to 1993, out of 10 games, uh, United has won eight. Uh, they have one draw and uh, they have lost only once. Uh, but that loss was actually quite recent in 2021. Uh, uh, and that was also at home where they lost 2-1. Now, defensively, both teams are a mess, especially Manchester United, who... Uh, as being as one of the top teams, top teams in the EPL, you'd expect them to uh, behave a little bit better on that defensive end and defend a little bit better, as a matter of fact. But uh, with the amount of injuries they have and all the players that they are missing, they simply, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, I see that uh, Rashford is listed as injured, Amrabat injured, McTominay is injured, uh, Kambwala listed as injured, Lindelof is out, Martinez, Varad, Johnny Evans, Luke Shaw, uh, Malasia, Anthony Martial. This is basically another starting 11 uh, that would probably be in the lineup if they were healthy. But now that they are not, the only proper defender that they, that they have is actually Harry Maguire. And I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, and uh, they can't keep a clean sheet. They haven't done it in a long time. They haven't done it since uh, early March against Everton when they when they've beaten them two 0 uh, And uh, I honestly have my doubts. I don't think they can do it here. Sheffield United might be a bad team defensively as well, but uh, one thing they have been doing it quite consistently is scoring goals, and they have scored at least a goal in five of their last six games. Now. Uh, I'm going to stay away from goals. I'm going to stay away from sides. I'm going to go with a bit of a game prop, and that is Sheffield over three and a half shots on target at minus 118. Uh, there's no pressure on them. They are aware that they're getting relegated. So they are coming out every game to play, uh, to enjoy football, and to do something in the attack again, and they have been doing it. So I'm taking Sheffield over three and a half shots on target at minus 118. In Coppa Italia, we have the second leg of the second semifinal game that is between Atalanta and Fiorentina. Uh, Fiorentina did uh, beat Atalanta 1-0 at home last week, actually a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but the situation is a bit different right now. Uh, Atalanta has advanced to the semifinals of the Europa League. They're coming off of a 2-1 win against Monza. Uh, They're playing really well, especially when playing at home. Well, Fiorentina on the road is a very sloppy team and they're not scoring a lot of goals. They're struggling a lot. Uh, their defense is not as solid as they are at home. And uh, I think that this one has a chance to go uh, into the overtime and potentially a penalty shootout, which means that Atalanta has to win this game. And I think they will win it. So at this price at minus 122, I'm taking Atalanta on the money line and uh, hopefully they come out, deliver and they get a nice win at home. 
For our next three games, guys, we are moving uh, into the French League 1, and the first game we have is between Lorient and Paris Saint-Germain, or the PSG for short. Uh, to keep it simple, guys, we have to go with PSG in this one. They are coming off of a very impressive week. Let me just find my stats here. I don't know where they go. Uh, they had a Quite an impressive week. They have destroyed Barcelona in the Champions League. They are coming off of a 4-1 win against Lyon, which is another uh, statement they made in the French League 1, and they will win another title. Lorient on the other side hasn't won any of their last five games. They have lost their last three in a row. There is 17th place with 26 points. Uh, they could definitely use points here to get uh, one step closer to the safe zone, but uh, that is now... Uh, only three points away, so they still have time, they still have a chance to do that, but I think they will need to wait another game to do it. PSG undefeated on the road so far this season, 10 wins and 4 draws, and to keep it simple, like I said guys, I'm taking PSG to win and over 2.5 goals at minus 122. Monaco and Lille is another interesting matchup we have in the French League 1, and Monaco is now undefeated in their last uh, seven games in a row. They have kept two clean sheets in a row, which is actually quite a bit of an anomaly here, if you ask me. I don't see them doing it third time in a row. Lille, on the road, uh, they have been struggling, yes. They haven't won any of their last three games on the road. Uh, actually, two games on, on, on the road, and they haven't scored a lot of goals, but uh, I gotta admit, uh, Monaco is not that good of a defensive team, but like I said, them keeping two clean, sheet, two clean sheets in a row is an anomaly for me, and I think that's going to change here. So uh, I'm going with both teams to score it over two and a half goals at minus 108. And the last pick of this video is between Marseille and Nice, another great matchup in the French League 1. Uh, Marseille is coming off of a 2-2 draw against Toulouse, however, they still can't keep a clean sheet. Uh, nice on the other side, when playing on the road, has been a bit sloppy and their defense hasn't been that great. However, it has been improving over the last couple of weeks when they kept two clean sheets in a row. Uh, can they keep another clean sheet here against Marseille? I don't think so. Marseille needs to heat up. They are playing in the Europa League semifinals next week. Uh, they are getting some players back from the injury list and they need to keep their form up. Now, the only way to keep their form up is to score some goals, uh, keep the morale high, try to win some points, maybe win a couple of games before that Europa League matchup. Uh, but I also don't think they can keep a clean sheet here still. So, uh, Marseille versus Nice, I'm taking both teams to score at minus 128. That's it, everyone. Thank you for joining me here. These were free picks for Wednesday. Hope you have a great day, guys. Good luck with all of your bets. Check out those preview picks I have going on up on the Pink Ducks uh, website. Uh, go check out those uh, those uh, betting tools that we have up on the sportchatplace.com. You can create your own parlays for soccer, uh, see profitable goal scores and such. So check it out, guys. See if you like anything. Put some bets in and let's win some money together. I'll see you soon with more free picks.